G'day guys, this is Tia, and welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. This one is a bit of a strange one. Okay, so some of you might be aware of this already, but basically somehow, someone discovered a way to take the weapons from Nuclear Winner and place them into Adventure Mode. This works on all three platforms, and no, before you get all excited, I am not going to be showing you how to do it, because I have not actually done it myself, and I don't plan to. Mainly because I don't want to get banned, if this does cause bans, and it has been patched as of uh, today's date, 21st of the 3rd, 2020. So yeah, this glitch may get people banned, so I have gotten a buddy of mine to get one of each nuclear winner weapon on, onto my alternative account, so that I can examine each weapon and see how they differ from their adventure mode counterparts. If you do want to know how to do this glitch, I'm sure someone out there has or will make a guide on it. So yeah. Now, firstly, let's just get this out of the way. I do not think this is detrimental to the game. I feel comfortable making a video about this glitch because of that reason. It's not doing any harm, like crashing servers or anything like that. It is not really anything special or game breaking in any form, unless you're really, really lucky, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But basically, all there is to it for these nuclear winner weapons are that they are the lowest level possible for their respective weapon types. They have infinite range, which means, of course, they have very, very, very small amounts of damage drop off, or none at all. And also, in most cases, they have faster fire rate and higher base damage than that of their adventure mode counterparts. Also, I've been made aware of the fact that since these are nuclear winner weapons, they actually ignore the damage cap in adventure mode during PvP. This is something that's hard coded into the weapons themselves. So, for example, if my laser rifle does 400 damage, it will do 400 damage in PvP. And only in two cases that I'm aware of, there is a visual or fundamental distinction from the adventure mode and nuclear window weapons. And those cases are the ultrasight laser rifle and the crossbow. The ultrasight laser rifle seems to shoot hit scan plasma rifle projectiles instead of the regular green laser beams, which I thought was pretty cool. And the crossbow, in that case, it is nuclear winner, so that means it can hold three bolts just like it can a nuclear winner. So that is pretty cool. Apart from these two, all of the other weapons behave very similar apart from higher damage and or fire rate. So basically, if you're a console player, this is most likely your only experience with illegal weaponry. PC players have had stuff like this and the presidential gorse rifle and laser muskets and stuff like that for ages. So I feel like it's pretty cool that console players now have something like this too. <laughs> so basically what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to scroll past each weapon in the pit boy and point out the differences between the regular adventure mode and their nuclear winner counterparts. Also, stick to the end of the video and I will show you a bonus weapon that this glitch can spit out. That I personally thought was really cool. Also, keep in mind that when I'm showing you through the Pip-Boy, the weapons with NW at the end are the Nuclear Winter variants. And the ones without it are the Adventure Mode counterparts. The attachments on the Nuclear Winter weapons are irrelevant, that is what they spawn with in the game mode and do not actually alter the stats. So now let's get into the weapons. So starting off with, we have the 44 pistol for the nuclear winner. As you can see, as opposed to its regular counterpart, it has higher base damage and insane range. That's going to be a recurring theme for most of these weapons. Same with the pistols. The submachine guns, pause at any time if you want to see them in depth, I'm just going to skim over them. Basically just higher damage, most of the time higher range, and sometimes higher fire rate. I couldn't actually get a regular counterpart for the assault rifle. But auto grenade launcher, the nuclear winner variant, has actually slower fire rate in this case, but a lot more range, which makes sense since it's nuclear winner. The laser rifle is where it really shines, just 18 damage to 125 damage, and 700 range, like this is overpowered as hell with the laser rifles. Pipe rifles, yada yada yada, same deal, infinite range. Charging laser rifle, even more of a damage boost and range increase. Combat shotgun, again, fire rate increase, range increase, accuracy, damage, it's really cool. Combat sniper rifles, auto and single fire. Range increases, damage increases. The crossbow, which I will be showing at the end of the video. The crossbow for nuclear winner holds three bolts, has insane range, fire rate, and a massive damage boost. Double barrel shotgun. Gatling guns, 400 to 600 fire rate. Pretty nuts. The gorse rifle remains largely unchanged. The handmade remains largely unchanged. Same with the laser auto pistols and all that, except for the range. It's a major boost. Lever actions, not much there apart from damage increase and range. Noob tube remains the same pretty much except for range. Minigun, not much of a difference. Missile launcher, virtually the same. 
nuclear winner actually has less range, which is odd, I thought. Power pistols, no one really cares about those, but I thought I'd show them. Pump action shotgun, same deal with the other shotguns I have shown. Radium rifle, this one actually, the nuclear winner variant, gives 88 radiation damage instead of 13, which is kind of insane. That would mean you'd take four or five shots to kill a regular person with just purely rad damage. Uh, this one's a kind of a strange one. The railway rifle that you get from doing this glitch has zero range, so and less damage, less space damage. I, I, I don't know, that's just weird. So the Salvage Assaultron head from Nuclear Winner, you can tell it's that one because in the legendary effect it does not irradiate the user. You can pause that there and see it. Also has slightly higher base damage. Scoped Hunting Rifle, base damage and range increase. Scoped Lever Action, same deal. Single Action Revolver, huge damage boost there. Range remains the same. Submachine Gun, huge range increase and rate of fire increase. Tesla Rifle, it goes from 10 pounds to 30 pounds. Apart from that, it remains largely the same. Ultrasight laser rifle remains largely the same, except the damage and fire rate improvements, as well as range. And also, it shoots hit scan plasma projectiles, which is pretty cool. Now, some of these weapons are still pretty garbage, but some people have been incredibly lucky and have done this glitch to the point where it spits out a ridiculously overpowered laser rifle. I haven't the faintest clue why some of them are so average and why some of them are so powerful, but yes, it is possible and if someone has their hands on one of these laser rifles, it could be a bit of an unfair advantage in some ways. Now, onto the bonus weapon I was talking about earlier. Here it is, the elusive weaponized Nuka Cola Quantum Paddle Ball. But eh, don't get too excited, it does one damage, still it is purely visual, which don't get me wrong, it is an awesome visual effect, but I was really hoping that this weapon would work like it did in Fallout 4. There are however more versions of this paddle ball that you can get, including the sharp, spiked, flaming, electric, and cherry. So basically guys, that's it. I just really thought this would be a cool little educational video showing the specific weapons this glitch can spit out. I'm sure there are more oddball variations of weapons like this quantum paddle ball out there somewhere. Now I'm going to take a few weapons of note that I thought were, well, noteworthy, and I'm going to show how they actually perform in the hands of someone that can use it. So here we are, we're going to be testing the three weapons I thought were of note. That is the Ultraside Automatic Laser Rifle, the Crossbow, and the Nuka Cola Quantum Paddle Ball. So let's start off with the, the Ultraside Laser Rifle. As you can see, it's actually quite powerful. This is Neo's PvP build and it is shooting hit scan laser uh, hit scan plasma projectiles rather instead of the laser beam it's quite bizarre i thought it was really cool okay so now onto the crossbow as you can see it is non-legendary it is just a regular old nuclear winner crossbow and it can hold three rounds and it actually breaches the 110 damage cap which is fucking insane like I said, all nuclear winner weapons can breach the damage cap. So if I really wanted to, I could bring out one of the really overpowered nuclear winner weapons and just one hit people. So that's a thing now, so enjoy that. Also, here's the paddle ball. In the menu like that, it just looks like that. Third person, it looks like this. And being used on Neo, it looks like this. So yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> Before I end the video off, I want to give a special thank you to this random mole rat looking cunt in front of me, <laughs> running towards me, Neo Lux, Lorik, and Rivera. These three people were an incredible help to make this video possible, so shout out to them three blokes. Bloody legends, mate. Fucking legends. <laughs> So anyway, that's going to do it for me guys. A massive thank you to my channel members, Tarsal Carcass, Neo Lux, and Unbustable Nut. I cannot thank you guys enough for the support, it truly means the world. Be sure to follow me on all my social medias and join my Discord, all of which is linked down below. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more from me, then consider subscribing. I'll catch us in the next one. Welcome to Valhalla.